Good Thursday afternoon, everybody. I'm meteorologist Tim Pandagis. We're about 12 hours post landfall of Hurricane Laura that made landfall around 1 o'clock Central Time early, early this morning as a Category 4 powerhouse with winds up to 150 miles per hour. Now that it's over land, it's not done yet. Sure, it has weakened. In fact, now as of the recording of this video, it is back down to a tropical storm status downgraded after spending roughly 54 hours at hurricane strength and a good chunk of that was spent as a major hurricane. Here's how it looks on satellite imagery right now. The latest update here from the hurricane center were down to 65 mile per hour winds. Gusts still up to 90. And again, keep in mind, this has been over land now for over 12 hours, and it's still packing wind gusts up to 90 miles an hour, traveling to the north at around 15. Something I want you to take note of, too, that we'll talk about in a second is the size. It's really expanded as it's been gaining latitude. Here's some specifics on that landfall that occurred around 1 a.m. near Cameron Parish in Louisiana. In fact, right over Cameron Parish and Cameron itself as a Category 4 with winds of 150 miles per hour. This thing just strengthened and continued to intensify right up to around landfall. It kind of sustained those winds at 50, 150 with gusts well over that in some spots. Now, landfall is defined as when the center of the eye moves over land, and that occurred roughly at 1 o'clock in the morning. You can see it here on radar imagery right over Cameron. Soon thereafter, we actually lost radar coverage from Lake Charles because the winds in this eye wall that were packing up to 130 mile per hour winds, gusts higher than that, completely destroyed the ray dome that's built to protect the radar itself. So radar data was lost within an hour after this making landfall. Again, Lake Charles is a little bit farther north from there. Here's a look at some of the peak wind gusts uh, that were calculated or recorded before the recording equipment failed. At the airport in Lake Charles, 132 mile per hour wind gust. Can you even imagine that? Massive destruction there in Lake Charles. And then you see the wind gusts out through most of the rest of the area. Beauregard Parish in Louisiana recorded a gust of 82 miles an hour. How about rainfall? Totals weren't as high as the models were saying, but still very impressive amounts. Sabine River here at Orange uh, had the highest total I could find, about eight and a quarter inches of rainfall. And a lot of this fell, again, in about 12 hours worth of time or even less in some cases. Here's visible satellite imagery now as the sun came on up over the system earlier this morning. Notice the size of it now. Roughly when you put the drawing tool on it, it's stretching up to nearly 1,000 miles in diameter. That's huge compared to right around landfall or so is around 400 miles in diameter. So as it's gaining latitude, it's kind of expanding. It is interacting with a feature off to the north and west. that's going to be pushing it to the east, helping to spread out its wind field just a little bit more as it continues that journey. But here's a loop over the last 24 hours. I mean, this thing looked like a textbook major hurricane with a very well-defined eye that was roughly 25 to 30 miles in diameter. The smaller the eye, the stronger the winds, and that was roughly a, a pretty small eye compared to some other larger storms that we've seen with larger eyes. So the landfall of Laura overnight, early this morning, makes it now seven U.S. landfalls of tropical systems this year so far. Three of them were hurricanes. We, of course, had Hannah, Isaias, and now Laura is the first major hurricane of the year at a Category 4. So where does it go from here? Again, it's sitting over northern Louisiana, southern portions of Arkansas right now, 65 mile per hour winds. Expected to travel north for a little while longer before taking that hard right-hand turn off to the east, continuing to weaken as a remnant low tropical depression, spreading rainfall into the mid-Atlantic and southern portions of New England by later on this week, or really into this upcoming weekend before moving back over the open oceans of the North Atlantic. How about winds here? Look at these plots as we head into Arkansas. We go over towards uh, Memphis and Tennessee and areas in northern Mississippi as well. Even though it's inland, here we are at 215, still packing wind gusts well over tropical storm force, 67 miles per hour there in Monroe, getting on into uh, later this evening, 815. Still tropical storm wind gusts. Memphis could be seeing gusts over 40 miles per hour. Same in Pine Bluff, Greenville, around 46 miles per hour. Overnight tonight in a very early Friday morning. Still Jackson seeing 40 mile per hour winds. Lawrenceburg, 35 miles per hour. And then as the storm begins to push its way to the east, it takes the winds with it. Notice they do slowly weaken, but still gusts well over 30 miles an hour. 
by tomorrow night. So roughly 36 hours would be over land and still having winds pretty strong. In terms of rainfall here, yeah, it's going to rain itself out. Its tropical system has plenty of moisture with it, so we could see a pretty good uh, amount of rain in some spots, anywhere from two to four to maybe some localized areas seeing up in over six inches of rainfall here, less as it pushes off towards the east there. On top of things, we still have to talk about lower, obviously, now that it's inland, but keep in mind, we're about two weeks out from the peak of hurricane season, and we can't let our guard downs yet. In fact, we can't probably for the next month or so. It's going to remain very active. We have two areas, two tropical waves watching out there in the Af in the African uh, coming off the African coast into the main development region in the Atlantic. Uh, this one right here that's approaching the leeward windward islands pretty much in the middle of the MDR right now. 10% chance of development in the next uh, two days and 30% chance in the next five. And then another wave coming off the coast of Africa here. This one much lower chances again. It's really far out though, so we'll see how it works as it moves farther to the west. 20% chance. The next name, by the way, is Nana. So where do we stand in overall uh, hurricane season in terms of climatology? Here we are August 27th. Peak is uh, September 10th, so about two weeks out from that. And then we still have a highly active time frame through the end of September, even into the first part of October as well, before the season gradually winds down and comes to an end by November 30th. All right, we'll get a quick breather in here as we uh, watch Laura move inland and fall apart and areas that were greatly impacted start the recovery uh, start to recover from this storm and the catastrophic damage that it brought with it. Uh, we'll continue to keep you updated here on any tropical developments. You can find us on our YouTube page, of course, and all social media platforms. Make sure you hit subscribe and the like button, and you can find me on all the social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday.